Hello, grade 10, and welcome to a new reading lesson. We're still in the theme of uh, health and uh, health issues related to eating and weight gain. The lesson is called The Path to Transformative Weight Loss. It means that weight loss, you lose a lot of weight and you transform. You transform uh, into a person with a lower, much lower weight. Okay, first of all, what is bariat bariatric surgery? First of all, this huge transformative uh, weight loss uh, could happen with a type of surgery which is very popular nowadays called bariatric surgery. Okay, what's bariatric surgery? They have to perform a certain kind of surgery on the stomach where they either uh, the whole purpose is for it to become uh, smaller and to accept less amounts of food therefore obese people will become uh, you know uh, will lose weight and have a healthy weight so this is one way which uh, obese people choose in order to lose weight it's of course it's radical it's a surgery after all now, number two, can anyone walk into the doctor's office and say that he or she wants to have weight loss surgery? Do you think we have specific requirements to be qualified to do such a surgery? Okay, um, can anyone? Of course not. They have to undergo, uh, especially obese people, they have to undergo certain tests to, to tell whether they are able to be put under anesthesia, uh, to undergo an open surgery which could be life-threatening so there are some requirements and of course not everyone is qualified to do this kind of surgery it's not safe for everyone do you have an idea about the different types of variartic surgery and the risks associated with each type we're going to talk about them in the next slide are you familiar with a person who had done a weight loss surgery? Of course, we're going to talk about this during live Zoom. You guys can share if you know someone or you have heard about someone. Okay, so this is what bariatric surgery spe specifically is. Three types. One, two, and three. First type, there's this is the esophagus coming down from your mouth, and it bypasses your stomach. That's why they call it a bypass. It passes your stomach, so the food doesn't go to your stomach and has to go through this narrow path. Therefore, you are obliged to eat less. The second type is called laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Okay, when you hear ectomy, it means the removal of. Of course, gastro and gastro means the stomach, everything related to the stomach. Sleeve surgery where they remove one part of the stomach, of course, the purpose is to make it smaller so people who are obese will eat less. They cannot eat more than a certain amount. They feel full uh, quickly. And then adjustable, adjustable gastric band. They put a band at the opening of the stomach. Okay. And of course, people will be forced to eat less because uh, they would feel uh, full uh, much faster. So those are the three types of uh, bariatric surgery. Now let's move on to our lesson, the path to transformative weight loss. On a break while shopping for Black Friday deals, a friend and I sat down for lunch in the Detroit suburbs. My friend quickly observed how I only ate half of my burger and picked over my loaded baked potato. I shrugged. Well, you know, I had weight loss surgery a couple of years ago. This is the, the narrator speaking. The writer, I said, I'm not shy about telling people I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy. Okay, this is the second type we talked about three years ago. I also advocate, have, uh, heavily advocate, I defend it for more women of color to consider it as an option. While millions of African-American women suffer from morbid obesity, of course, the word morbid means deadly. We account for some of the fewest patients receiving this procedure. So we can already uh, tell that she is a woman of color. For those who don't know, vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery is a type of bariatric surgery that removes part of the stomach, restricting food intake. It's a minimally invasive 
procedure. Why? Because it's done through a laparoscopy. Okay, it's not like an open surgery. There's no big wound. That reduces the stomach by 80 to 85% to about the size of a banana. A study by the Journal of Internal Medicine states that black women rarely choose bariatric surgery as an option for many reasons. Lack of time and resources such as private medical insurance, as well as cultural issues like identifying with larger body sizes or samples. Other participants were concerned that others would receive surgery as too extreme or cause them to have a lack of control over their food choices. When I had VSG, of course, the type of sleeve gastrectomy or gastric sleeve, the decision wasn't made lightly. I have always been an overweight person. I was the only child of a single mom and I was 11 years old when I started gaining weight. McDonald's was a mainstay of my diet. So she used to visit McDonald's very frequently. I was also teased a lot in my youth, causing my self-esteem to take a beating during my formative years. During formative means uh, years at school. I felt upset and frustrated when my classmates started to call me the fat whale. Food became my primary source of comfort. You know, many times when people are stressed, they overeat. I'm not alone. Doctors assert that emotions cause 75% of overeating. Consuming comfort foods can provide some relief from negative emotional states. However, emotional and binge eating, binge eating when you eat, just you're binging, you eat endlessly, leads to obesity, which then causes more depression and anxiety. It's a vicious circle. So you feel depressed because you're obese, because a person is obese. They would, over, they would overeat and then they would feel obese again. This, this is what we call a vicious circle. You can't get out of it. Like most overweight people, I tried all kinds of ways to lose weight. I had some success with Weight Watchers, along with experimenting with various shakes, pills, and even shots. I exercised and went on fasts. She fasted. You know, like we fast for 7 hours or 12 hours without food. Still, my weight fluctuated, went up and down at between 200 to, and 250 pounds for years, eventually. I topped out at 274 pounds. Besides the visual effects of my obesity, I was plagued with the back and knee pain and an overall sense of fatigue, tiredness. I was also pre-diabetic means the, the the you know the when you are almost diabetic when a person is almost diabetic and had just started taking medication to stave off the disease it was then that I began to research surgical options but I was afraid and a little ashamed I wondered if people would think I was weak or lazy that I had taken the easy way out but most of all, I was desperate for change, so I did it anyway. During the first year, my sleeve surgery, my life changed dramatically. I thought that I was prepared. I read books, articles, and joined online support groups. Still, nothing thoroughly prepared me for life after surgery. A 2016 New York Times article explains that the intestinal tract, your intestines, the path in your intestines changed by any bariatric surgery, whether sleeve, gastrectomy, okay, or bypass. These changes also affect the more than 100 varieties of hormones regulated by the gut. These changes mean that tastes change, like my cravings for a whole pan of brownies. Not only do bariatric patients eat less, but we also desire less food, okay, because part of the stomach was removed, okay, Certain uh, hormones that uh, make a person crave uh, more food, okay, are become more balanced this way. So they not only are they unable to eat a lot, they desire food less. In the three, three years since my surgery, I have lost 100 pounds. My body has ultimately settled in at about 185 pounds. At 5 feet 8, my weight loss is significant and I navigate the world in a noticeably smaller body. I have given away nearly two thirds of my clothing. Even my shoes are a half size smaller. Where my fat was once a place to hide from the world, I now earn compliments on my figure. 
Bariatric surgery is an adjustment that affects more than just weight, but it has given me a better quality of life. So this is a case where the bariatric surgery was a success. Bariatric surgery motivated me to address the source of my food issues through therapy and helped me develop tools to improve my experience. I now get my dopamine highs from walking a few miles a day. I'm falling more and more in love with the woman in the mirror, not just because of how I look, but because of how I feel. So she feels much more confident about herself. Okay, now moving on to the questions. Answer the, each of the following questions in two to four complete sentences of your own. Based on paragraph three, you write a brief definition of gastrectomy. A gastrectomy is a medical procedure where part of the stomach is surgically removed to limit the intake of food. What can be inferred from the writer's statement in paragraph 10? Bariatric surgery is an adjustment that affects more than just weight, but it has given me a better quality of life. What can we say? Of course, we can infer the above statement that bariatric surgery doesn't only affect the patient's physical health, but it can positively impact his or her social and men me mental ones, such as uh, you know feeling better about the, yourself, have a good self-esteem, have a new lifestyle, etc. In reference to paragraph 11, what impacts did the transformation have on the narrator? Of course, we're going to read this together. Uh, um, bariatric surgery motivated me to ad address the source of my food issues. Bariatric surgery has favorably transformed the author's life. It favorably means in a positive way. She started to love herself and love the way she looks. She is no more, no longer ashamed of herself and uh, no longer feels inferior. She is happy and proud of herself. She is a person who knows what she wants and can choose a healthy lifestyle. Now, uh, this brings us to the organizational skills questions. Uh, do you find the writer of the above text successful in her choice of the title? Okay, the title is How Bariatric Surgery Helped Me Transform My Life. Well, of course, uh, it is successful since the title reflects the main idea of the text, which is about how uh, the narrator underwent such a surgery and it transformed her into a better version of herself and gave her sort of a new beginning. What means of support does the writer use in the above text? What is the aim of using such support? The author uses a lot of support. Okay, uh, uses types of evidence. First, she uses uh, facts such as real places, Detroit suburbs, and real names uh, of the journal, Journal of Internal Medicine, and restaurants, McDonald's. Second, uh, the author uses research results. We have to quote the research results, a study by the Journal of Internal Medicine. Um, and then finally, the author uses statistical figures such as numbers and percentages. Of course, we have to include those. The aim of the author behind using such types of evidence, supporting evidence, is to achieve credibility, accuracy, and objectivity. It's very important to include this when you write about types of evidence. The last sentence, the aim behind using such types of evidence is to achieve credibility, accuracy, and objectivity. Chart analysis. The chart below shows the rate of obesity in the US by race and ethnicity. Race mean color, ethnicity, their background, are they Asian, Hispanic, uh, Western, Caucasian? Read the chart below and then answer the following, or the question that follows. Okay, U.S. obesity rates by ethnicity, meaning the origin, white, Hispanic, or black. Obesity, and here, vertically, you have the percentages. What do the percentages indicate about the race of, rates of obesity in the U.S. by ethnicity? How does it differ 
among the three ethnic groups presented in this chart. Explain with evidence. Okay, notice whites, like I would say around 22% obese, Hispanic, almost 30, and then the blacks at around 40%. So we notice that the blacks have the highest rate of obesity, followed by the Hispanics and then the whites. This is how it's analyzed. The chart shows the percentage of obese people in the US according to their ethnicity, full stop. To clarify, the percentage of white obese people in the US is 20%, which is less than the percentage of Hispanics, 29, and blacks, 39. We can deduce from the above percentages that the black ethnic has or the black ethnicity has the highest rates of being overweight or obese compared to other groups in the US. The white or the white ethnic group has the lowest one. Okay, now the extracts. The reading selection, of course, has 11 paragraphs, 1 to 11. Now I need you to tell me where this extract belongs, to which paragraph. By 11th grade, I weighed nearly 200 pounds. Here she was talking about her formative years, her years in school. B, so it's much easier to be satisfied after eating smaller portions. Remember the paragraph where she talked about uh, she no longer craves uh, that much food. Okay, so extract A is the correct ending to paragraph 5. Extract B is the correct ending to paragraph 9, all written in a complete sentence. Finally, vocabulary in context. Uh, relating to or specializing in the treatment of obesity in paragraph three, mentally distressing concern or interest, uh, weariness or exhaustion, exertion or stress, correction or modification to reflect actual conditions. Okay, relating to or specializing in the treatment of obesity, variartic, anxiety, stress, fatigue, overtiredness, adjustment is when you make certain changes in your lifestyle. Okay, so this is it for this uh, lesson. If you have any questions, please reserve them for the Zoom Live and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.